actionfigureresource.com. Yesterday's toys, today's treasures. Welcome back to Action Figure Resource. I am Alex Shaw, and I'm here with retropreneur Ed Cato of Bonfire Agency. Ed's speciality is marketing to niche demographics, which is one of the most challenging aspects of selling a brand. You have to take something that's not a household name and find the people it will appeal to. So today we're going to be talking about Captain Action and Lady Action. Hello, Ed. Hello, Alex. Delighted to be speaking with you. A lot of kids out there, myself included, might not have been around for this guy the first time round. So we're going to start off with a little history, uh, like a, a Captain Action 101. So what can you tell me about Captain Action's brief first appearance on the toy scene between 1966 and 1968? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, it's a fascinating story. Captain Action was really the first superhero action figure. He was created by the same team that developed G.I. Joe. In fact, this was the project that they had right after G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. And much of the same way that G.I. Joe could turn into an uh, army guy or a Navy diver or an astronaut, Captain Action, the figure, could turn into superheroes. So it was, it was built on that uh, idea of like uh, they call it razor, razor blade. Um, the razor, of course, is Captain Action mm -hmm. and then all the accoutrements – come along with him. So the, the idea, which is so difficult to do now, was uh, you'd buy the figure and then you'd buy these outfits so that you mm -hmm. could dress him up and actually have the figure become Superman or Spider-Man or Green Hornet or Lone Ranger or Batman or Steve Canyon, uh, the Phantom. The list went on and on for about uh, uh, 13 outfits. And um, it it, it, it would today. It, it's so difficult from a licensing perspective. In those days, and we've talked to the folks. Um, you know, they'd take a cab around New York, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, they'd draw up the contracts, and the, the the administrative assistants or secretaries back then would do a carbon copy, and they'd be off to the races. And there were no style guides and no no real plans for um, different intellectual properties. Mm. Uh, but they were able to put this thing together. Of course, Captain Action. Um, came right before that that Batman TV superhero craze hit. So yeah. when, hmm. when when Batman 66 debuted, Captain Action was out there and all ready to go. Right, it, right. Fortuitous timing. And um, uh, for a generation a little bit older than you, Alex, uh, this was the go-to superhero toy. Um, also uh, – reinforced by some fantastic ads in the DC books at the, in those days by uh, Kurt Schaffenberger was the artist on those. Um, so uh, even if you didn't uh, buy the comics at that time, you probably saw the books afterwards as you'd uh, – or the ads afterwards as you'd buy the comics or collect the back issues. So he, uh, he, he debuted, was very strong for about three years and then kind of never went away. So what was the fundamental difference between Joe of the 60s and Captain Action himself? Aside from, I mean, was it mainly the fact that he was, uh, he had very specific named roles as opposed to just a different uh, military outfit? Correct. And, and from a business perspective, what these, these entrepreneurs did in those days, they, they'd take one idea and sell it to one company, the, the Hassenfeld brothers mm. became mm. Hasbro, and then... Take a, take a similar idea and, and sell it or resell it to another company. And Ideal was the company that created uh, Captain Action. So the, the essential difference was the type of identities that the character would assume. G.I. Yeah. Joe would assume nondescript soldiers in various functions. And, and, and that kind of morphed into other um, you know, nonspecific yeah. uh, Explorer adventures. types in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Right. As, as the um, taste for military toys kind of waned in the 70s he turned into more of a adventure guy or an explorer and less mm -hmm. so a military fella um whereas captain action um was firmly rooted in this notion of superheroes and, and becoming uh, a, a particular superhero yeah. uh, at that, that time so in the 70s there was also a, as well as a slight waning of interest in the military there was also a slight decline in interest in comic books because obviously the 60s was the the crucible of the silver age so, like, you know, when you hit the 70s, 
a slight obviously uh, the batman tv show had uh, slightly declined so i suppose if if the the focus of captain action was on the superheroes at that point suddenly that became a little confused and then when star wars came around it was completely different absolutely yeah. you know it was uh, there's a couple of fascinating things there yeah the the batman craze really drove so much of it yeah. and at, the, at that time too um uh, th- there was a, a reaction. You could see it on a Saturday morning cartoons in the toy aisles where, where people first embraced it. And, th- and then the country got a little worried about things like punching and hitting to solve yes. problems. And they said, gee, maybe that's not a good idea. So, you know, the Saturday morning cartoons focus on superheroes went away and, and really was pushed back into to different little corners. Um, and for toys and, and the guys who were buying the toys – they felt the same way. Um, Captain Action, right at the end of its line, um, tried to focus less on the superhero identities, mm. focus more just on the characters themselves. It was uh, Captain Action, the uh, uh, main protagonist, mm-hmm. Action Boy, who was his sidekick, and his uh, evil, creepy counterpart was a guy named Dr. Evil. And uh, they, they gave that a go, um, but didn't quite come about. Captain Action was also licensed with other toys um during that time so in addition to this toy line you had um a dc comics line of five issues mm-hmm. you, you had peculiar things like uh swim toys um yeah. and uh, uh halloween costumes for captain action you could become captain action for halloween um kind of a meta turning it on its on its head uh and, and some other things like a um promotional send in your box top program mm. with a uh um um, popsicle type uh, company called Cool Pops back in the day. Okay, so fast forward to what? Nearly thirty years later, nineteen ninety eight, and uh, this is the first reappearance of Captain Action uh, with uh, playing Mantis. Um, so, so what actually occurred there for for that uh, space of time? Yeah, at that point, um, you know, toy companies were looking back to those Echo properties that w- resonated with uh, kids who would then be in their 30s and 40s and, and um, trying to produce uh, different toy lines that, that um, uh, had that cachet. And now mm. you see it with things like um, uh, Jem, who was a uh, uh, Barbie. Um, oh, I'm well aware of Jem. Yes. Yeah, same idea. <laughs> She's truly outrageous. She's truly outrageous. Um, well, that thing was happening back then as well. And there was a company called Playing Mantis who – um, had acquired the rights to Johnny Lightning. Mm-hmm. And, and at that point, the fellow who's now my, my business partner on Captain Action was consulting for playing Mantis and uh, had a great, great passion for Captain Action um, and uh, talked about how it was a similar property. And so they brought back Captain Action uh, as a part of that um, push for a bunch of those uh, older boomerang-type brands. Um, Captain Action came back. It was... I think that the problem back then was they were not able to get the licenses for the the bigger um, characters. So instead, they focused on some of the uh, second level, uh, at least at that time, for popularity characters like uh, the Lone Ranger and the Green Hornet. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a certain amount of success on the um, shelves of uh, Toys R Us and in uh, comic shops. Um, But uh, after a few years, that line went away. Yeah, so that was uh, headed up by Joe Ahern, your your current uh, yeah. partner. Yeah, yeah, he was consulting with Playing Mantis uh, for them at that time, and uh, super passionate guy, loved Captain Action brand, yeah. and uh, and and you know, then of course when this opportunity came about uh, after that, you know, Joe had had a, a great um, experience with Captain Action. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that that moves us neatly on to 2005, which uh, runs all the way up to now. So this is when you got involved with it. Yeah. So, so uh, for me, Captain Action was that toy that was, uh, um, you know, the perfect Christmas uh, sort of toy. A um, lot of fun. Also a huge comic nerd and, mm-hmm. and advertising guy, as you say. So um, had done a lot of projects uh, in the comic book space and uh, helped uh, Reed Expo launch in their sophomore year, New York Comic Con, and had deals with DC and Marvel for different projects. Uh, um, brand enterprises and sponsorships. So, um, Joe approached me and he says, you know, I, I think that I can acquire the, the trademark for captain action. Do you want in? 
you know, mm. you're supposed to be a marketing genius, Ed. Do, do you want to do this? And of course I said, no, you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing in the world I want to do. And uh, I probably should have stuck to my guns, but I didn't. And uh, we partnered for Captain Action. And uh, the, the thing that we did differently at that mm. point is um, – we took a deep breath and I said, Joe, let's not push for a toy line right away. Let's instead build the property a little Brand. bit. Yeah. Um, I understand how comics work and I think we can get some good traction there first. Um, so then when the time comes for the uh, toy launch, we'll be in a better position. And that was the tack that we took, Alex. We we tried to build the brand slowly. We started with comics and some collectibles and, and then we got to the toys. Getting to the point where people will be actually – asking for the toys rather than saying oh hey there's toys oh we need to explain who this guy is first yeah right right or the guy oh i remember that uh yeah, let yeah. me try and wrap my mind around it instead we you know we launched a a, a comic uh with moonstone with some you know great artists and writers like paul gulacy and marv wolfman and stephen grant and mm-hmm. fabian Nicesa. and um we were we were the number one best selling company for that publisher Moonstone, who uh, you know is at that point was a top ten comic publisher. But uh, we just did Gangbusters, and uh, we exhibited at conventions, most notably New York Comic Con. We've been at that uh, uh, every year since New York Comic Con three, and um, we we started some smaller licensing deals. So then when the time came to to put together some of these bigger toy deals, uh, we were ready. And, and I think fans were ready, uh, new fans and, and uh, old fans as well. That was going to be my next question, actually. Um, uh, aside from simply putting out the books, uh, there, I'm assuming there's, there's a big focus for this one. So you have to, on the one hand, make people who are totally unaware of him um, – aware and on the other hand you have to cater to people who have loved him since day one and say he's back um so so how do you manage that how do you balance it what's the uh, the process yeah you know well first of all we try and be really true to what the brand is and you know one of the the overused buzzwords in marketing now is authenticity but mm-hmm. i think we we very much embrace that so you know we we've tried to Get to what makes Captain Action special mm-hmm. and, and interesting to 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 fans of all ages, you know, be they new or old, and really reinforce that. And then from there, we first, uh, you know, we have a bifurcated marketing strategy. So we first reach out to those old fans mm-hmm. who know the brand, who love the brand. Maybe they have a collection. Maybe they started. Um, we we now oftentimes hear some folks say, "Oh yeah, I had an older brother," or "I had a." Uh, cousin who had that, and I was always kind of fascinated by it. Gotcha. You know, so uh, uh, the the guys who grew up with Captain Action now just turned fifty, so they're yeah. they're at that stage where they're you know um, most times have a little extra spending money and and can pursue the things that they really enjoy. Kids are um, out of college now, so <laughs> yeah, kids are out of college or, or maybe in college, and they can you know have get a, some space. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they take over the rooms. And um, so uh, uh, that works out well. But then with the, um, with the brand um, in general, we find the ways to, to reach out to new folks are um, at conventions mm-hmm. and with particular products that um, have an existing appeal. For instance, we, um, at, at the conventions, we typically sell out of our convention exclusives. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know how those things work. We create some great ones. And, uh, you know, we have people who come up and they say, geez, I've, I have no idea what this is, <laughs> but this exclusive looks really cool, dude. Can you sell me one? And boom, you know, we, we sell out. Um, so that, uh, that actually becomes a bit of a problem for the um, longtime collectors where yeah. they, they, they say, hey, you know. <laughs> Uh, you I know, couldn't make I, it to Comic Con, and you sold I, it to I, all the kids. Yeah, or I, I made it on the third day, and you guys were sold out. Gotcha. Uh, so we try and deal with that, and then you know some of the things that we we we've done um, for uh, we're with a new publisher now, Dynamite, fantastic publisher, mm-hmm. and we created kind of a year one story for Captain Action um, called Code Name Action. So this was like a super spy thriller. It felt like maybe not like a James Bond movie as much as a a Matt Helm movie or an In Like Flint movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Roberson was our writer. Jonathan Lau was our artist, interior artist. And, uh, gee, the, the series was a lot of fun. And I, I think a lot of fans gave it a try saying, 
you know, I, I don't know who Captain Action is or I don't collect toys, but uh, this is kind of a cool series. Yeah. Um, next, we came out with a, an all ages book called Captain Action Cat. Art Baltazar and Franco and Chris Smith created that. And um, that was uh, in, in the vein of uh, Tiny Titans and uh, Little Hellboy that uh, those guys are so good at. Nice. So, you know, all of a sudden all their fans are – or trying Captain Action Cat. The book was brilliant. It was it was bonkers, but it was brilliant and uh, very very proud of that. Um, and then things like uh, we had a doll for um, Lady Action with Tonner, which I know we might get into later. Mm-hmm. But um, all of a sudden, the Tonner fans, um, who who are um, another flavor of fan uh, that 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 I didn't really understand. I understand them much better now. They're a great type of fan, but they uh, embraced our our new character and uh, bought the Tonner doll and droves in the costumes. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that was a great way to reach them, which, yeah, you know, we, we hadn't anticipated before we started this. So rather than just specifically going, right, we have one small niche market, you kind of forked it out into multiple like, uh, pathways and sort of sent it out to, to sort of meet these various markets on their own terms. Yeah, you know, we try and um, cast the big tent, you know, and then invite a lot of people to the party. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we have the the one six scale collectors at, at the core of it, but then we have passionate comic book fans. We have doll collectors, and mm-hmm. and now we have some activities scheduled for the early part of 2015 where we will even have um, some other collectible and toy lines of vinyl figures, uh, five inch figures, and. They all come with their own type of collector too. Who, um, you know, I think if we do a quality job and can deliver on some of the promises that we that we make, uh, they'll embrace it too. Oh, there's one other thing I needed to mention because uh, I've already talked to uh, a chat before. The amazing heroes. There's, uh, um, as I recall, Captain Action's one of those. That was the uh, the recent Kickstarter went through. Yeah. yeah. So that that's a that's a great line, and that that's um, exactly what I'm talking about. So you know, there there's a lot of folks who um, might say, "Gee, I never collected 12 inch uh, toys before," but you know, in my sweet spot, my perfect you know, holiday gift or birthday gift was a, a five inch figure. Um, yeah. that's what amazing hero is, is kind of chasing after the fellows running that Bill Murphy is a, a brilliant, super passionate individual. Um, Chris Irving is a guy that we've worked with in a couple different capacities in the past. And, uh, we have, we introduced Chris to Bill Murphy. He's doing the, uh, hero bios on it now and has become a, uh, a, a passionate drum beater for it too and you know all of a sudden this little kickstarter now has uh obscure heroes like the green turtle who's who's was probably the first asian american superhero mm-hmm. and um uh madman by our buddy mike allred oh, uh, nice. part of it so uh, i didn't know he was expanding that's fantastic yeah you know what they they did their kickstarter program and then they did a a, a 1.5 kickstarter program where they they pushed it a little bit more and i i think that they're going to get people to embrace that too so uh i've just found it thank you okay <laughs> so yeah folks if you haven't heard it already i've also done an interview with uh, bill murphy about uh, amazing heroes and the uh, kickstarter which uh, at the time when we uh, were going through it hadn't uh, quite finished and uh, then we did an epilogue at the end when it was successful so uh yeah we talk about captain action a little bit in there actionfiguresresource.com This is the second part of an interview between myself, Alex Shaw of Action Figure Resource, and Ed Cato of Captain Action Enterprises. In the first, we discuss the hero's history. In this one, we talk about his new female counterpart, her new one-sixth scale action figure from Go Hero, and the animated show now in the works. So, the big one, obviously, because this one's uh, one of the main reasons for us doing this interview, Lady Action. Created in 2009, so this one's a relatively new one uh, for you guys. So, so what was um, what was the thinking behind it, and and how did she come into being? And uh, and talk obviously talk about the new figure from Go Hero. Sure, sure. Lady Action. Um, I've never put it this way before, but this is probably a good way to put it. Lady Action was created all all because of uh, my personal vanity and insecurity. So, <laughs> <laughs> so as we were planning uh, our convention strategy, um, we, we had a thought. We said, look, let's get an actor to play Captain Action. 
uh, in the booth. And, you know, the more we thought about it, I, I remember turning to Joe and said, Joe, I am not standing next to some guy who's, you know, taller than me, has more hair than me, who, who is trimmer than me for four days. And uh, uh, it, that we're just not going to do that. Let's instead get a, a, a female version of, of Captain uh... Ed. It's super tasteful. You know, uh, I'm the father of three daughters and always mindful of, of you know, uh, appropriateness and good taste. I was going to say thank you very much for not putting a boob window on her. I saw yeah. a pic of her next to Power Girl and it's like, <laughs> would spot the difference. Yeah, our, uh, yeah, our, our super heroine has a turtleneck on for, for goodness sake. Absolutely. So um, we, uh, we created uh, Lady Action. Um, kudos to our, our booth model who was absolutely brilliant and the camera just loved her and she had a, a great way about her. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as we, as we had lady action at the booth the first year and the second year, um, a lot of traction and a lot of fun. And then there came a time when, uh, we, we said, look, let's, uh, kind of expand her. And, uh, we put her into the mythology and uh, a couple backup stories and, uh, 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 a comic of her own later, uh, Lady Action was maybe not fully fleshed out, but uh, a lot of fun. We we kind of did some interesting things where we uh, uh, tiptoed around other trademarks. So she's she's essentially the daughter of uh, James Bond. Ah, I was because obviously the fact that she's a British secret agent uh, makes her significantly different. Look, Captain Action's always struck me as sort of a, a chisel jawed American chap. Yes, yes. Our, our first writer was a uh, brilliant uh, British author named Tony Lee, who's mm -hmm. done a lot of work, most notably with uh, uh, Doctor Who. Um, and so as we developed the concept, we, we kind of built it around that, and we wanted to have a, a little bit of uh, uh, texture difference, so it's not all just the you know, chisel jaw chap, as you yeah, said. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, um, Lady Action uh, came about, and uh, we love her, and she's a lot of fun, and... Um, uh, we, we've had a, a few um, a few different forays in, into different uh, merchandise with her, uh, T-shirts and collectibles. And mm -hmm. um, just this past year, we released a doll with one of the leading doll companies here, Tonner. Mm -hmm. um, they started off as a, a competitor to Madame Alexander, but I, I think they do fantastic work far beyond that and uh, just gorgeous stuff. I'm, I'm looking at one now here in the in the office. And then um, our upcoming project uh, is a one-sixth scale uh, lady action with Go Hero and Executive Replica. She's gorgeous, and, and I don't just mean it as a character she's gorgeous, but this, this uh, action figure is absolutely stunning. It's a one-sixth scale, highly detailed. Mm -hmm. um, we have been with Captain Action up till now, mostly in that mass-produced, as you say, uh, toy um, zone. So... Um, toys that can be bought by collectors and bought by kids and, and sold mass as well as sold in comic shops. Mm -hmm. This lady action figure is a little different. So this is very much a high end figure. Mm -hmm. um, will retail for uh, 139 US. Highly articulated action figure, uh, more for uh, posing and displaying than uh, playing in the sandbox backyard. But mm -hmm. uh, hey, we encourage that too. And uh, she comes with. Um, in that, in her what is now traditional lady action outfit with a, a sword and a gun and interchangeable hands, and we've got some great things planned for her with the uh, executive replica Go Hero guys as well with with some costumes coming out that can't really get into yet, but um, gotcha. very very exciting stuff. And she'll she'll be more along that mold of um, the Captain Action model of of a figure and then some costumes. We displayed her at New York Comic Con. And um, we co-exhibited with the Go Hero executive replica team. And all their stuff is absolutely beautiful. But this uh, lady action just looked fantastic. Well, I noticed that, uh, uh, unless I'm much mistaken, the uh, Captain Action is now being uh, marketed with uh, Marvel costumes. Yeah. So we, for our main toy line, we started off with a uh, licensing, uh, co-licensing agreement. Uh, with Marvel Comics. So you can buy the Captain Action figure mm -hmm. and you can um, also buy outfits to change him into Marvel superheroes like Spider-Man, Captain America, Thor, 
uh, Iron Man, Wolverine. We do have a bad guy in there, uh, Loki, Thor's evil half. Nice. And uh, we also had, had an interesting idea. We had a build-a-figure, which we called uh, Assemble an Avenger program, where we, we secreted away um, pieces of Hawkeye's outfit in each of the costume sets. So, nice. So it's like a, a build-a-figure from uh, Marvel Legends. Exactly. Yeah, we, we, we uh, unabashedly stole that idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. It definitely needs to be used more. Well, you know, kind of a way to give a little bit more. And, and you know, one of the fun things with Captain Action, too, is uh, we've got a lot of people who customize outfits or mix and match, mm-hmm. you know, either very seriously or very silly. Both ways are, are totally legitimate. And, uh, you know, more, more parts are, are fun for, yeah, for Captain yeah. Action collectors. So, so that's great. And uh, round two... The group that we're working with also has a license with uh, DC Comics, mm-hmm. so we're gearing up. We're we're a little behind schedule with this, but we're gearing up for some outfits um, with the DC heroes, uh, most notably uh, Superman, Batman, and Joker uh, mm-hmm. for the next round of, of costume sets. So you can't talk about the costumes that Lady Action is going to be wearing, but that at least gives us an idea of what might be available at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And you spoke of an animated show before we started this. Oh, yeah. So we are working hard on an animated series for Captain Action. We're, uh, we've got some great partners on this. Uh, Gang of Seven, also called G7, is the uh, animation studio that, that's uh, the engine behind this all. Um, populated by some some great superhero fans and some great Captain Action fans. In fact, their pedigree includes Marvel heroes um, from the 90s like Iron Man and Fantastic Four and, mm-hmm. and, and heroes in general like uh, Brave Star and Biker Mice from Mars. Um, Marv Wolfman, who uh, co-created the Teen Titans and did Tomb of Dracula and about 50 other uh, big names you've heard and about 500 medium names that you've heard of as well – is uh, our lead writer on this series, and, and we're just thrilled. Marv is a super guy and super creative, of course. And we're um, working hard to uh, uh, find the appropriate venue and network for this series. In fact, we've, we've got a big couple of meetings coming up uh, the week after next. And, and we've, we've shown snippets of this at San Diego mm-hmm. a couple times, and uh, it's it's going to be a great series. Our original premise was uh, let's just do Johnny Quest, but with Captain Action. Nice. Um, and uh, uh, we've kind of morphed away from that and tried to be a little more original. Uh, it'll be adventure comedy, adventure hyphen comedy series. But um, Lady Action plays a, a big role uh, in this series, and uh, we're just thrilled. What um, uh, market would you be aiming for with this? Would it be specifically for kids, adults, the whole family? Yeah, this one really will be um, for the whole family. So, you know, the networks that we're looking at for this are, are really, you know, the big networks, um, mm-hmm. that, you know, that, that you think of when you think of uh, children's programming or all ages programming. Um, we, we're really looking at that sweet spot, less so of an adult swim type program, yeah. although, although there there are some discussions about perhaps um, – uh, creating something different for that adult swim type thing but but really right now we're focused on the um uh we're focused on on, on this series for uh, all ages mm-hmm. and of course the nice thing about that is um that might be a, a, a great way to take us to a new level for uh merchandising and toys and yeah, it, and new ventures so once once this gets on air, that kind of opens up a lot of new doors for, for everything else we're talking about. Toys, Brings it to a motor, new generation, oh. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anything more connected with Lady Action? Any tie-ins you have coming up? Oh, you bet, Alex. We've got um, a couple projects uh, on the schedule now and a couple more in development. But the ones that we can speak to are um, working with Dynamite for a, a Lady Action series um, we, we love the stuff that Dynamite does, and in fact, uh, Dynamite's very good at pulling together some uh, creators that, that we respect and from a you know, business point of view and that we love from a fanboy point of view. So um, we're excited for that. And then um, we, we also have a, a, a fun thing coming up. So we had partnered with Airship 27 and created a pulp novel series for Captain Action. 
um, the the approach we had for this is we said, what if Ian Fleming, the James Bond writer, mm-hmm. had written a Doc Savage novel starring Captain Action? That, nice. That's essentially what it is, this kind of spy pulp hybrid. And uh, we have two out of three done in this trilogy written by Jim Beard, who, who just knocks it out of the park. <laughs> and we wanted to um, also have a, a prose novel uh, uh, for Lady Action. But for that, we're taking a, a, a different tact. And uh, another one of our uh, sweet spots is uh, crime thrillers and film noir. Mm-hmm. So uh, th- this story is really going to be this, um, you know, bruised knuckles, Mickey Spillaney crime thriller um, starring uh, Lady Action. Um, and we're looking at a, a mid-year release for that as well. I'm thinking of Agent Carter now. I don't know if, uh, how much you know about the new Marvel series, but uh, it seems like it would fit very well with that kind of crowd. Yeah, you know, I hadn't really thought of the, the similarities, and I'm excited for that as well. But, yeah, I guess it is um, a little bit like that Agent Carter, um, you know, British agent fighting crime and bad guys. And, yeah. uh, that one's more period. Is it going to be uh, like a, a, a stylized a contemporary one or actually a period one? For, for ours, we're going to be um, – stylized but will 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 be evocative of the 50s um, gotcha. so like batman the animated series it never specifically yeah. dated itself but it had inflections correct yes like that or or, or gotham more recently where, oh, of course, where yeah. it's not you know it's somewhere you know kind of now-ish or maybe a couple of years ago but it has a real a real style for it gotcha very exciting stuff thank you ed so much for coming on and talking to us Oh, Alex, it's been a delight. Thank you for having us. And we are very excited to see the Lady Action figure hitting shelves, which will be, what, January 2015? Yeah, hitting January 15th, available for pre-order now. You can go to uh, our site, captainaction.com, the Go Hero site, the Executive Replica site, or or any of the Facebook sites, and we'll we'll get you pre-ordered for it as well. And we would love to get you back on in the future when you have more retro action toys to talk about. Sounds good. We'll look forward to that, Alex. Thank you so much. We will too. I've been Alex Shaw, and you folks at home can check out all kinds of collecting guides, top 10 lists, fascinating manufacturer and toy line histories on YouTube, on our podcast, and of course, at our main website, Action Figure Resource. Resource.com. Yesterday's toys, today's treasures.